So this is the first video for section 6.8 and hopefully you guys have seen on the course resources that I've split up this section into numerous uh, smaller videos. This is definitely um, one of the more challenging concepts mathematically in this class. So I wanted to break down each video so in, uh, in case you guys run into troubles, um, it'll maybe be easier for you to pinpoint when and where, um, on what topics you're having troubles. Okay. So the first video um, for this one, uh, I'm going to take a non-chemical approach. So we're going to talk about cookies in this video. Um, very delicious. Yes, I know. Um, if you don't like this, you know, just skip on to the next video and go to the chemical uh, description of limiting reactant. Um, for a lot of you, I know um, chemistry, just the concept of chemistry kind of uh, tenses you up. So sometimes talking about cookies and putting it into terms um, and ways of thinking that you guys already do naturally um, maybe can help you apply uh, the later chemical concepts. Um, so what I'd like to start off with, this is your uh, chapter six worksheet. Um, just wanted to start by looking at um, our cookie recipe here. Um, so I'm sorry that you can't read that very well, uh, but we're going to kind of morph off of it. So we'll just use it for a little bit here. So <clears throat> number three is what I'm focusing on. And it says that we have the following recipe for shortbread cookies. Now this is not an actual recipe, I made it up to make it simple, so don't go and try this. Um, but the, the basic concepts are there. So we have two cups of butter are needed, one cup of sugar, and four cups of flour. Okay. And then we're told that we have on hand four cups of butter, three cups of sugar, and twelve cups of flour. And the first question was how many batches can you make? Okay. So hopefully most of you were able to look at this and say, well, okay, I can make two batches. Okay. Well, <clears throat> hopefully most of you can see that. And what I want to show you is how um, you arrived to those two batches and try and kind of morph that into our vocabulary for limiting reactant, theoretical yield, and so on. Okay. So uh, this is going to be 6.8. Fill in our notes here. So percent yield and limiting reactants. I'm going to start with a non-chemical approach. Basically what I'm looking at is your pre-lecture worksheet. Number three. Okay, so chapter six worksheet, uh, but the question number three there. So, we have our recipe, okay? two cups of butter, one cups of sugar, four cups of flour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of write that more out as a chemical equation, okay? since we're trying to kind of morph this into talking about chemistry. So I'm going to use that two, um, we're, we're going to always deal with cups, so I'll just kind of leave that alone. Um, so we're going to deal with two cups of butter. Okay, I'll shorthand that B for butter. Then we need one cup of sugar. So I'll make that a one so it doesn't look like something else. And we need four cups of flour. Now this wasn't added in this problem, but we're going to um, use it here. Um, so let's say when we combine the butter, the sugar, and the flour in this ratio, so a 2 to 1 to 4 ratio, okay, we end up with two dozen cookies. 
That's what the recipe says anyways. Okay. So this is according to the recipe. All right, then we're told we know that we have on hand. We know that we have four cups of butter. We know that we have three cups of sugar. And we have 12 cups of flour. All right, so I'm going to take the worksheet away and just deal here. Then we had our first question. Was how many batches can we make? And we had already said that we can make two batches, right? So two batches. Now how you probably looked at that is you said, okay, I have more butter, I have extra sugar, and I have extra flour. So what happens if we double the recipe? Well, then I'd need four cups of butter. I have four cups of butter. I'd need two cups of sugar, I have more than that, and I'd need eight cups of flour, and I have more than that. So we can make two batches of cookies because we have enough of all three ingredients, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now we can't make three batches of cookies because we don't have enough butter. And if you've ever made cookies, butter makes it better. Right? You can't make these cookies without having this appropriate ratio uh, in order to get those good cookies out. Okay? So kind of chemically what we did um, to determine how many batches we can make is basically so kind of chemically we determine how many batches from all the butter then we also have to determine how many batches <coughs> excuse me from all the sugar And how many batches from all the flour? So if we have four cups of butter, okay, we need them at two cups at a time, we can do two batches. If we have three cups of sugar and we need that one cup of time, one cup at a time, then we know that we can make three batches of cookies if we had enough of everything else. Okay? <clears throat> but just looking at the sugar, we can make three batches. Same thing for the flour. We have 12 cups of flour. We have to do it in multiples of four because we need four cups at a time so we can make <clears throat> three batches of cookies using all of our flour okay. but like we just discussed we can't make three batches of cookies because we're gonna run out of butter first okay. so even though
So even though we can make three batches of cookies using all of our sugar and our flour, we can't actually make the three batches because we run out of butter before that. <clears throat> so what that means chemically is basically our butter, our butter is limiting how many cookies we can make. Okay, so our butter is the limiting reactant. And then our sugar <clears throat> and flour are excess reactants. We know that if we do, if we make two batches, we have to use up two cups of sugar, so we'll have one cup left. We need to use eight cups of flour, so we'll have four cups of flour left. Okay, so those are what we call excess reactants. That's what we're going to have left over um, from making these cookies. <clears throat> now, next que question. Is how many cookies do we actually end up with? So when you make cookies, okay, and now we're not talking about different sized cookies, we're going to say that all of the cookies are the appropriate size of what they're supposed to be according to the recipe, right? The recipe says two dozen cookies. Well, I don't know about you, but whenever I make cookies, I never come up with how many cookies they actually say. I always end up with less. Right? You know, you spill some of the flour, you don't get all of the butter out of the container so it doesn't all get in there. Or if you're like me, your finger gets in that batter and, you know, you just can't waste that batter so you just eat it. Right? So you never actually end up with however many cookies you're supposed to. Okay? And <clears throat> in chemistry we call that the actual yield. Okay, so we, we have to actually make the cookies in order to figure out how many we're going to end up with. Okay, so let's say for every batch we actually get 1.5 dozen cookies. So, if we know that we can make two batches, right, then we can actually end up with our actual yield of cookies is three dozen. All right, next question. Now we're kind of leading towards this percent yield concept. Okay. How many cookies should we end up with? Well, if we're making two batches, following the recipe, says that we're going to get two dozen cookies per batch. Therefore, we should okay, end up with four dozen cookies. 
That's what we should end up with. So in chemical terms, okay, so chemically what we're looking at then is our theoretical yield. Our theoretical yield, what we should end up with theoretically okay, should be, so theoretical yield is four dozen cookies. So that is what we theoretically should end up with. Okay. So we look at things like this chemically as well, as we're going to look at uh, reactions and figure out how many or how much product we should end up with, okay, and that's our theoretical yield, how much product we actually end up with. So we have to actually perform the experiment okay, to figure out what we end up with. And then our third kind of question, okay, which you probably don't ask when you're baking, but we do when we talk about chemistry, is what is the efficiency of the recipe? Okay. Or, you know, of the chef too. Because if you're like me, most of the reason why I make cookies is to eat cookie dough, not to actually end up with cookies. So what we do for efficiency is in chemistry, we call this percent yield. And the percent yield, hopefully you've seen this before when you filled out your uh, pre-lecture worksheet, but we have the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. A yield just means what you're ending up with, your product. And then we want that in percent form, so we multiply by 100%. So in this case, our actual yield, what we actually come up with, how many cookies we end up with, we have three dozen cookies. I'm just going to shorthand that with a C. And then our theoretical yield, what we should end up with, is four dozen times by 100. And we see that we have a 75% yield. Okay, So 75% of what we should have ended up with is what we ended up with. All right. So that wraps up kind of talking about this in non-chemical terms. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll define each of these terms, the limiting reactant, excess reactants, um, let's see, the actual yield and the theoretical yield, percent yield, get those um, definitions into our notes. And then we will work on a problem just looking at limiting reactant uh, first, and then we'll look in theoretical yield and percent yield uh, in another video. And then in, uh, what would that be, third or fourth video for this section, uh, we'll put them all together into one big example. Okay. And then the very last video for section 6.8 uh, will be showing you what I call the mole road, which for those of you who are visual people, uh, might be something helpful to kind of organize your thoughts and organize how these calculations happen.